Assalamu alaikum fam, hope you're doing well. So let's dig into it. Bum, ba, da, Please buy this book. You need this book. Look how beautiful it is. I mean, just, just look at it. Look at it. It looks beautiful on your bookshelf, okay? Come on, buy it. So we are in the book of faith and we're in chapter 35. Clarifying the usage of the word kafir for one who abandons salah. Okay, bismillah rahman rahim it was narrated that Abu Huraira said, the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, when the son of Adam recites a verse of prostration and prostrates, the shaitan withdraws, weeping and saying, woe unto him, and according to the report of Abu Kurayb, woe unto me, the son of Adam, was commanded to prostrate, and he prostrated, so paradise will be his, I was commanded to prostrate and I refuse, so the fire is mine. Look at that. Al-Amash narrated a similar report as number 244 with this chain, except that he said, I disobeyed, so the fire is mine. It was narrated that Abu Sufyan said, I heard Jabir say, I heard the Prophet peace be upon him say, between a man and shirk and kufur, there stands his giving up the salah. Look at that. Okay. So, how do we help each other maintain salah should be something that the ummah looks at. And that is one reason why I think it's very important for Muslims to support each other on Patreon, buying each other's books, going to each other's events, helping each other find jobs, right? Whatever we can do to make it to where we don't abandon our duty, right? Because look at that. Jabir bin Abdullah said, I heard the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, say, between a man and shirk and kufur, there stands his giving up the salah. Wow, so, just, wow. Chapter 36, clarifying that faith in Allah, most high, is the best of deeds. It was narrated, that Abu Huraira said, the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, was asked, which deed is best? He said, faith in Allah, the mighty and sublime. It was said, then what? He said, jihad in the cause of Allah. It was said, then what? He said, hajun maburur. According to the report of Muhammad bin Jafar, the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, faith in Allah and his messenger. And Hajun, okay, so that is the accepted Hajj, or the one free of sin, okay. So Hajun Mabrur, wow, that's a good new word. Put a little annotation next to that one, perfect. A similar report, number 248, was narrated from Azuri with this chain. It was narrated that Abu Dar said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, which deed is best? He said, Faith in Allah and jihad in his cause. I said, Which slaves are the best to set free? Oh, I remember this. He said, Those who are most valuable to their masters and whose price is the highest. I said, What if I cannot do that? He said, Then help the one who is skilled or do something for the one who is unskilled. I said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, what do you think if I am unable to do any good deeds? He said, refrain from doing evil to people, for that is an act of charity on your part. Yes. When I first read that, it was like, this is really interesting because you would, it, when you say, okay, who's the most valuable, like, what kind of slave should you get rid of, like, to get free? And then it is so basic that we would think that we would say the most valuable one but sometimes we, it just slips our mind so this hadith was one that was like oh, of course right but notice how it also says to help the one who is unskilled so it's like that makes me think of helping someone to get some skills right help them get skills and then if you can't even afford to do that just refrain from doing evil Look at that. You don't even need money to refrain from doing evil. Right? Look at that. A similar hadith number 250 was narrated 
from Abu Dar from the prop. It was narrated that Abdullah bin Masood said, I asked the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, which deed is best? He said, the salah offered on time. I said, then what? He said, honoring one's parents. I said, then what? He said, jihad in the cause of Allah. I did not ask any more out of him, out of consideration for him. Do you notice something that with these hadiths, the patience of answering lots of questions, that's how you also know a good teacher. Because I've had teachers where you ask too many questions and then they start to get a little frustrated, even if they're good questions. It's like they just want to stand and talk. They don't really want to answer your questions beyond that. And if you ask one question, they don't want you to ask any more. It's really interesting. But here you can see the patience to, you know, explain and take the time to do such important tasks of clarification and explanation, right? It was narrated that Abdullah bin Masood said, I said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, which deeds will bring me closer to paradise? He said, the Salah on time. I said, what else, O oh, Prophet of Allah? He said, honoring one's parents. I said, what else, O oh, Prophet of Allah? He said, jihad in the cause of Allah. So notice this honoring one's parents. Do you think about how some political movements really have you disrespecting your parents, right? Cultural Marxism puts a rift between the child and the parent so that the state becomes more essential than the parent. And when you break down the family structure, it's hard for you to honor your parents because you have pain and anger towards your parents. Really think about that because here, honoring your parents is a way to help you get closer to Allah and help you get closer to paradise. And if you have no parents to honor, you don't even know who your parents are or you're valuing a culture that teaches you to disrespect your parents, to disrespect your elders, to think you're a know-it-all and to put musicians and actors above your parents' advice. We're getting into some trouble here. And again, the doing your prayers on time, right? Really, punctuality. Punctuality, teaching you the time is the time. A lot of people can't even show up to interviews on time and then wonder why they didn't get the job. They can't show up to class on time and they wonder why the teacher has told them, if you keep being late, I'm going to drop you from the class, right? Punctuality and respect to your parents. It's very, you know, it's just amazing. It was narrated from Al-Walid bin al ayazar that he heard Abu Amr al-Shaybani say, the owner of this house, and he pointed to the house of Abdullah, told me, I asked the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, which deed is dearest to Allah? He said, the Salah offered on time. I said, then what? He said, then honoring one's parents. I said, then what? He said, then jihad in the cause of Allah. He said, he told me this. And if I had asked one more, he would have told me more. Again, here, notice how the other hadith said, I didn't want to inconvenience him, right? So it's like the questioner has a bit of like, okay, don't, don't, don't be annoying. But here it's like, you see like, oh, if I would have asked, he would have answered. So you see like both perspectives here. Shuba narrated something similar as 259 with this chain and added, and he pointed to the house of Abdullah, but he did not mention his name. It was narrated from Abdullah that the Prophet peace be upon him said, the best of deeds are the Salah offered on time and honoring one's parents. Chapter 37, clarifying that shirk is the worst of sins and the worst of sins after shirk. It was narrated that Abdullah said, I asked the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, which sin is the worst before Allah? He said, attributing a partner to Allah when he is the one who has created you. I said to him, that is indeed 
Grievous, I said. Then what? He said, then killing your child for fear that he may share your food. I said, then what? He said, then committing adultery with your neighbor's wife. Look at that. Look at that one. Okay, look, look, look. This is really making me think today. So attributing partners. Because of the BLM, uh, George Floyd murals being everywhere, they even made statues. Some people have argued that Muslims who are wearing the picture of Floyd, who are standing near the statues, who are putting flowers around the statues, are committing a sort of adult, like a idolatry. That they have started to be, you know, painting murals of him. It's sort of become a worship symbol because of how often they're mentioning his name, how they put in his face everywhere, even though he put a gun to a pregnant woman's belly and robbed her, and he was a career criminal and was high on drugs, they, that they have gone too far with mentioning his name, maybe more than they actually pray. So this is something very interesting happening in America, uh, where it's like the association of partners here. I think it also can come down to political movements. Right? When you put a figure above your maker and your duty, beyond the normal means, like Sean King, that, of the white guy who pretends to be black, he claims to be a Muslim, yet he really goes beyond the normal means of like his activism. So it really makes you think if he's committed shirk and he's promoting shirk to the Muslim followers he has really an interesting conversation now in the beginning I would say everyone was outraged but as it goes on longer it starts to look it's almost starting to look like a religion right very interesting and then here so it says killing your children for fear that he may share your food so abortion here it's like clearly abortion is something that we should all try to help women not do and we should try to help them feel comfortable with keeping their children. Because, yeah, I remember we learned the pagan Arabs used to go and dig a hole when the child was three, put the little girl inside and bury her in the sand. Today, they go to Planned Parenthood. And those abortion mills are placed specifically in the, a lot, in the, unfortunately, in the African American community and in the poor communities so that they are more likely to want to go and abort their children for fear of poverty. So here it's like, that is a powerful thing we can do, like, like in terms of da'wah to people who are suffering in poverty, is to kind of show them this hadith and be like, don't, don't abort your kid because you have fear of food. And maybe we all can donate to food banks in our local area and to check upon the people in the food bank lines, right? It's very important. And then here it's committing adultery with your neighbor's wife, right? So that would be a good point with, with Christians where you could have a little bit of like, look, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife is a Christian principle. And then here you can really look, you guys. We also agree that you should not want to commit intercourse with your neighbor's wife. Lawyer your gaze. So another really interesting point of a bridge that can be built in terms of like calm yourself down, stop spreading, you know, anti-Islamic propaganda and stuff. Very interesting. Man, there's so many good hadiths. They really get you thinking, don't they?